How's it going everyone? It's Jeff Chrysler here, a detail enthusiast here with my next episode of my BN1 restoration. So I've been going through the checklist and crossing off all the small details and deficiencies that I had to figure out and get sorted. You know, little electrical and brake issues and things that needed tweaking. So getting her all ready for safety and inspection. So I'll show you what we've been up to. Let's get into it. First thing I did was uh, took all the wheels out and took them to the tire shop, got the old tires removed. I cleaned them up, did any touch up paint work I needed to do, and then uh, had my new tires installed with new tubes. So I decided to go with the uh, Michelin XAS uh, tires that uh, they're a nice period uh, correct tire. They're not the factory tires, obviously. These came with the Dunlop Road Speed, um, the RS5 uh, bias ply tires. But, uh, you know, I plan on driving this. I plan on driving this right across the country. So, it's, you know, I wanted a good solid tire that's going to be stick to the road well. And um, these Michelin X, you know, everybody who's had them raves about them. So feeling really good about that. We got... Uh, whole set of five and I was able to uh, paint and restore my spare wheel as well and got new tire on it so it is now installed in its storage compartment there so yeah fresh boots for the Healy and uh, here you can see it nicely Fills out. That's that larger spare wheel bag um, that the early BN1s had, so nicely fits these tires. And yeah. Now, one more thing I'm doing here is uh, I still need to install the rear boot lid seal. And on early BN1s, they kind of start in the bottom corner and go around um, and end in the next corner and funnily enough uh, in the parts catalog this is done in four pieces but the ones we've seen it just looks like one continuous piece um, but yeah it's just a thin rubber uh, in like a C shape uh, similar to what was on the actual boot lid when they moved it to a boot lid it's basically the same seal it's just uh, uh, put in the trough rather than around the lid itself and uh, but what I'm doing, because I don't want it to impede the fit of the lid, um, it's got to be really thin. So I've taken the standard seal over here, and uh, you can see it's this C channel. Um, and I've been working at it on my uh, belt sander and thinning it down. And then, you know, check and recheck. And some areas need to be thinner than others, like the, the corners where it goes around the radius need to be quite thin there because uh, it's tighter fit there so and then the ends of them I thin them right down that's how they were done they just kind of fade out like that and uh, in those bottom corners so but one last thing I'm going to do to finish this off is the originals that I've seen they actually had like a crosshatch texture to it like a fine woven texture on the surface that se seems to turn up in a lot of the original photos I've seen so I'm going to try and recreate that i was thinking of getting a piece of like screen door and uh just some screening and uh, uh putting it you know in a vise with some long strips of flat wood and you know pressing it against the top surface of the seal just squishing it together to you know stamp the seal with that screen um hopefully so i'm going to give that a go we'll see how it works okay so one more thing i've done a uh, controversial detail uh, definitely was not applied to all cars but it's been found on lots of early bn ones at least um, the hand painting of the lip around the uh, trunk opening the boot opening um, you know on white cars it's been found to be black uh, the gunmetal gray car it was found to be there and black Healy blue cars, it's been found in a dark blue. And so, and my car certainly showed evidence of having dark blue or black there at some point. And so I'm just faithfully recreating that. Why not? You know, a lot of people don't do it. That'd be 
sort of neat little detail to add. And it does, you know, clean up that opening because it just kind of blends in with the rest of the boot interior. So um, I can see why uh, Donald Healy may have wanted that done, on the at least on the early cars. They certainly didn't continue doing it into later stuff, but uh, figured why not. So I, yeah, hand painted that whole lip around. And now I've just got to install the actual boot seal. It's fitting nicely now, so I'm about ready to glue it in place now that that's been painted. And there you have it. The seal is installed and uh, you can see how it just tapers off in the bottom corners there. And you got the three little uh, buffer uh, blocks there as well. And that's all there is to it. So nicely, installed there and uh, I've tried the boot lid and it closes nicely um, so that's great very happy with that and there you go boot lid closed with the seal in there so got a nice gap it's not sitting up uh, took a lot of work to get it nicely fitting there um, had to sand the bottom of that seal quite a lot um, Unfortunately, I've been unable to get the textured pattern into the seal. Um, I tried, I tried a number of things. I tried using a piece of screen and putting it through, uh, like with a vise against it, trying to imprint the rubber. I tried uh, using a big, uh, heavy grain mill file that had a good texture in it. I tried squeezing, the, heating it up and squeezing it in a vise. Um, and yeah, nothing would imprint the, the rubber. It just bounces back no matter what you do to it. So, um, so it is what it is. It's, it's doesn't have the, the texture, but uh, otherwise looks, looks correct. So that finishes the boot. So I've just been resolving some minor issues I've been having uh, with the electrical, with the lighting specifically on my car. Um, just going through the diagnosing stage, so I thought I'd share. Um, the headlights were sort of working. They weren't working at all for the longest time, and uh, I was able to determine it was the actual switch on the dash, because if I jumpered the two terminals, suddenly they worked. Uh, but then they only worked on one setting, and if you tried to dim them to, uh, with the dip switch, uh, they wouldn't work at all. It would just shut them off completely. So I was scratching my head and, you know, I replaced the dip switch and turns out it wasn't the switch. And if I actually just use a, uh, an ohm meter on it, the, you can see that the switch works. So I've just been trying to isolate it and now I'm just testing. And uh, sure enough, if I use my little test light and connect to ground and touch it, it's even getting power to the light. It's actually this plug into the back of the light is if you just move it suddenly the light comes on and both lights were like that so they were both failing to make that connection um so i'm now just uh i'm taking this out and you'll see there's these little bent over tabs there's three of them going around well if you bend them out a little bit it'll draw this thing in tighter and make a much better connection so i'm just going to bend all the tabs a little further these are brand new uh plugs that i got for these uh, to, to use these adapters that came with the pigtails I bought. I already had these plugs on it, so I just bought these adapter pieces. Um, but sure enough, they're not fitting very well. The old ones never fit very well either. It was a similar sort of plug. Um, so. so as you can see, these plugs just are a, a bad fit. They it only relies on these two tabs, there are three tabs going around, and I tried bending them, and it does make it a bit tighter, but I was unable to get it tight enough so that it's pushed in far enough uh, to make both contacts on the bulb work. So it, it literally needs something to hold it all the way in. So what I'm thinking of doing is mounting it up um, compressing it and drilling a few tiny holes and putting some tiny screws in just to hold it so that it can't rock back and forth like it's doing. Um, so yeah, I've got some new actually uh, 
LED light bulbs uh, that will fit these light units. And so they're on their way in the mail. So I'm not gonna do anything until the new bulbs arrive. Um, but for the time being, so that I can get the car safetyed, I did have a pair, of, a set of these uh, just Sylvania halogen sealed beam units. Um, so I've put those in just temporarily. That'll get me on the road and they work beautifully. Um, so that fixes that. I have full lighting now and everything works beautifully. So um, yeah. Uh, the reason I've decided to go with these the LED uh, headlights is uh, with these Heelys and the early generator that they have, when you have these standard headlights uh, draw about 7 amps um, when, you're, when you have them on full beam. And uh, that's a lot. And when you've got the headlights on 7 amps and the parking lights and brake lights and... Uh, wipers and heater like if you're going through the rain like that the generator just cannot keep up and you're gonna kill your battery so um these new led headlight units draw about two amps so big difference will save a lot of energy that way and and they're brighter so um i've decided to keep my standard bulbs for all the smaller lights because they draw a lot less power um than the headlights. So for all my parking lamps and brake lamps, um, I'm using the standard bulbs. That way I don't have to replace my original flasher, which is a nice early unit that uh, I'd like to keep. So yeah, kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, in some of those last shots, I was noticing that the, uh, the back reflective part of these headlights was getting a little rusty and crude looking. Um, so I decided to just go ahead and polish them up and, and repaint them. And uh, man, interestingly enough, I went to color match the paint that was on the back of them. And it is it is identical to the same color paint as used on the original early horns for these cars. So yeah, it makes sense. They're both Lucas products uh, from the same time period. So yeah, those look much better now. Uh, nicely, freshly painted. I just masked off obviously the glass and the uh, rear connector area and uh, so now I'm gonna I had carefully saved and removed the original stickers that these came with so I'm just gonna glue those back on with a bit of crazy glue and there we go good as new ready for those new LED bulbs and then uh, I can reinstall them in the car so my new LED headlights have arrived uh, from classic dynamo and regulator conversions out of the UK. Uh, like the name says, they specialize in classic uh, dynamo regular conversions. They also sell all sorts of LED lighting kits. And uh, this is where I got these specialized LED bulbs that will drop right into the standard Lucas uh, bulb. So um, that's gonna make a big difference as I restored the backs of these the other day, gave them a fresh coat of the paint. So these are ready to go back together. And to get a better connection with these plugs, uh, I've got a bunch of these old little uh, flathead screws, uh, really tiny ones. So I think I'm gonna fit these bulbs in, gonna line up the groove there. that they drop right in place beautiful and yeah plenty of clearance that's great so now i can put these guys on and again they go on a certain way you got to make sure all three line up and uh, there you go so now what i'm gonna do is uh, you can see there is a bit of back and forth slop even when it's locked in place uh, so I'm just going to press it down, hold it in position, and drill three holes and put in these tiny screws. So you'll have to pull the screws out, obviously, to change the bulb, but uh, at least it'll be held in tight quarters so it makes good contact with that bulb. And there you have it. I've now just gone along and installed a couple of these tiny screws in there, and that thing is rock solid. 
and you can see it's fully engaged because both contacts are kind of pushed up they're spring loaded inside so it was it before it was rocking so you'd see one pushed up and the other one not so they, it needed equal contact on both of them uh, to compress both springs so that they're making good contact so I've done that to both of them I've got screws in them and uh, they should be good to go and look at that we have lights those are these LED bulbs in my standard headlights and boy do they ever shine really bright so that's great. And I've sorted out the signal issue as well. Of course, the ignition needs to be on for that. But uh, right signal, or left signal, I should say. And you can hear that. Uh, that's my original. Uh, signal relay box clicking up there so everything is working as it should so including the fuel pump as you can hear so we'll turn everything off so lights and signals working what the signal issue was if you remember I uh, when I worked the signals before, the tail lights were doing what they should, but the front parking lights were both flashing simultaneously together in both directions uh, when I tried right or left. Um, racked my brain, I, was, I traced the wires and uh, using my own meter and uh, uh, just checking where I'm getting power and where I'm not, and traced it all the way back. It turned out that the two wires that go into the actual dash light for the signals, because that's the light that flashes, those two wires uh, were touching each other before going through the bulb, because they come in really close and they go through the actual bulb itself to complete the circuit. So yeah, the telltale sign was that bulb was not flashing. So something was up with the bulb. I went and checked the bulb and noticed that the wires had were touching each other. Um, so got them separated and made sure that they are the bulb is what's completing that circuit and now it's all working so glad to have sorted that out um yeah but watch out for that because those wires are quite close into there where they where it slots into the back and uh they had just come into contact with each other now on top of the getting the lights all functioning properly i've been going around and just rechecking all my grease joints. Uh, there were a couple that I was having problems with before where I couldn't get grease through them. Um, so I tried replacing some of them and uh, yeah, it's just a case of getting a really tight seal when you put the gun on, you have to really force it on there and hold it because it was just shooting around the, uh, the actual grease fitting. But if I press really hard, I can get it in there. So I had to go back and Regrease a couple spots, but now everything's well greased and uh, ready ready for the road. Now the only other thing um, that I've run into is brakes. So I've had a, a good pedal, um, but I was a little nervous about there still being some air in the front because it, it was quite a struggle getting all the air out of it before. So I had my helper in the other day and it started bleeding out some of the fluid and lo and behold i'm getting this it's like almost black now this started a really light clean purple and it's coming out really dark so i've got some sort of contamination happening here i don't know where it, um where it's coming from it has to be from the feed system because I've gone around and done all four wheels to see if it was just coming from one. Maybe it's that brake cylinder or I'm not sure, but uh, I've checked it and it's the same color, dark, blackened fluid. And there's no visible chunks floating around in it, no flecks that I can see. But um, it's hard to tell in this light, but when this goes in, it's a much lighter, clearer purple. Uh, this is quite dark. It's, it's, it's filthy with something. Either the can itself had something in it, 
uh, which is possible because that's my original can. It was hard to flush it out, and I think I did initially wash it out with Varsol, and then it sat on a shelf for a year and a half, two years before I actually used it. Um, but there may have been petroleum residue in there. Uh, I'm not sure. That's a possibility. Um, uh, there's And then, of course, the master cylinder, which I rebuilt. Yeah, let's see if I can get a shot of it. There it is, down there. Um, as you can see, really tricky spot to get to. Um, have to get under the car and reach up in and uh, yeah. So I've ordered a new master cylinder. I've also ordered um, new uh, brake flex hoses. And I'm basically gonna go through and change out all the rubber um, involved with the brake system because I don't want to leave anything to chance. The, the back brake cylinders are my originals that I rebuilt with kits and you know the new ones are so inexpensive I'm just going to replace those too just to be on the safe side. New flex hoses again inexpensive pieces might as well change them all out and of course the the one expensive piece is the master cylinder. I rebuilt my original almost two years ago and it sat on a shelf and you know there's any number of things can be happening there but it must be from the feed system because all four wheels have the black fluid in it so um, so we'll get that resolved okay so here you can see I have now removed the uh, master cylinder here and the reservoir and the uh, adjoining pipe and uh, I'm now going to take apart this master cylinder just to see if I can find anything obvious. You can see it's just filthy from uh, the body shop because it sat in there for like seven months uh, around dust and all the sanding dust and everything like that. It's, and it's in such an awkward spot, it's really hard to clean it. You only see the bottom of it. So, um, But this certainly shows sign of it's, there's quite a bit of rust in there still. Um, uh, here's the fluid that I drained out of the system. You can see it's pretty, pretty dirty. That should be a nice light, clear purple, um, which it's no longer. So I've just taken this apart, master cylinder, and you can see this, uh, this seal definitely has some wear. So it's been getting nibbled away at, um, so that's no good. Yeah, and this piston, as you can see, is, I don't think, up to the job. It's got scoring in it. This master cylinder was toast. So, glad we caught it. Um, new master cylinder, like I say, on the way. Uh, you know, live and learn. Uh, I tried to keep this. It's a lot dirtier now than it was when I put it together but uh yeah it's uh that seal is definitely not doing its job and freshly back from electroshine platers here in sydney i gave them my complete uh brake fluid reservoir canister and had them properly clean it and had everything replated actually in silver cad which will give it good protection and uh so everything's fresh and clean inside so my new master cylinder has arrived. Um, I got a new TRW, brand new master cylinder to replace my old one. And as you can see, I've got my fill can all painted up and ready to go back together. So now this uh, new master cylinder just came in uh, bare uh, steel. So I'm gonna paint it black as well before I go about reinstalling it. So I've gone and painted the new master cylinder and the uh, reservoir can. So they're looking good, just uh, still need to apply the decal there. But uh, the master cylinder is ready to install. Uh, here's the connecting pipe. Um, just clean that up, that's a new one as well. Um, and I've got new flex hoses here, I've got brake cylinders. Um, um, yeah, so we're ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna install the master cylinder first. So what I've done is I've uh, bench bled the, the master cylinder. I filled it up with brake fluid and just carefully worked it so that it's 
got all the air out of it and it's full of fluid. Um, so I've just put the caps in for now and I can offer it up to the car, making sure not to tip it over and uh, bolt it in place and get the pedal linked up to it. So I can do that and then, uh, and then once I get the deco on here, I can reinstall the uh, pipe and a fill can and of course uh, re reattach the, uh, the main feed line. Just where the feed lines hang down here, you can see that's where the master cylinder bolts up. I just put a cap on this guy for now. But uh, yeah, that's the main feed line that feeds the whole system and uh, goes over to that brake junction over there. So what I did was just uh, blew it out. Um, I undid all of the flex hoses here to the fronts. And with the flex hoses all done, including the one in the rear, I just blew it out with some compressed air. Okay, so I've just reattached the new master cylinder and uh, I made sure to wind that nut to the same spot the old one, my original one was, so pedal's in the right spot. Um, and of course, I had to offer it in here and do that up first to the pedal before actually putting it up in position and you have to have the bolts in, the holes already, and then uh, push it up into its position. And I got, I had to get the, the one furthest line that feeds the rest of the system um, started first as well and then move the whole cylinder in position and tighten up the bolts and then I've now added this feed line so tricky quarters but we got it in there and uh, she's all bolted up now okay so I've got the master cylinder all reinstalled new master cylinder I have now uh, changed out all of the flex lines and um, I've, as you can see, I've removed all the hubs and brake shoes and I've clamped off all of the wheel cylinders. These are all my new wheel cylinders. And uh, so um, all that's left now is to basically bleed the system. Um, well, first of all, as you can see here, I, I finished my brake reservoir here. I've got the new decal on and I just clear coated the whole thing to help seal the decal onto there. Um, so I'm just about to reinstall that. Um, uh, as you can see, I've got, I've already got the feed line installed. It's just waiting there so I can install the canister and just screw that onto the bottom. Okay, and as you can see, I've now reinstalled the freshly cleaned and painted uh, brake reservoir, brake fluid reservoir. So, and I've just topped it off with fresh fluid. Um, it's all clean lines and replaced all the rubber components basically, including a new master cylinder. And uh, she's ready to bleed now. So I'll have my partner uh, work the brake pedal. And uh, basically, as I was saying, we start with the uh, left rear cylinder. You can see I've got little C clamps on all of the wheel cylinders to keep them all the way uh, closed. That way there's no air in the cylinders and we can bleed them to, uh, more easily. And uh, once we have clean, fresh fluid coming out at all cylinders, uh, we'll be good to go. And as I did in previous videos, you always start with the furthest away wheel and then next one and then work your way closer to the actual brake cylinder. So we've got my lovely partner Kat here helping bleed the brakes. So just working out the last of the air. I've gone around through all wheels and uh, we've got a pretty firm pedal. So I'm just doing another circuit, uh, starting with the left rear. I'm just doing the right rear now. Uh, this is just the second time to get any last bubbles out. Um, and we should be good to go. Thanks, Kat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap we've got really good solid pedal now and nice clean fluid coming out so uh all four wheels are getting you know full flows without any bubbles left um so yeah i'd say the system is nicely bled now so i can go ahead and reassemble my brake shoes and get them all adjusted with the uh, hubs and uh put the wheels back on
Now, one other thing I've been doing with the wheels off here, you know, been going through, as I showed you, I've re-greased everything, just made sure everything's good and topped off. Um, and also, I've gone along and painted in all of the body fasteners that should be body color. Um, so all of these, because these bodies were sprayed, uh, painted as an assembled unit. So all of those fasteners would be painted body color. Uh, also, you can see, uh, not sure if I showed you guys, but the correct routing of all this wiring here and how this is all finished Get in here. There's my, uh, the brass caps for mounting the headlights. And of course, the adjuster screws have these red plastic caps on them. Those are my original ones. I just cleaned them up. Um, and yeah, all of this body hardware has been painted uh, Healy Blue. Of course, not that. That's from the fender beating. But, uh, but yeah, these uh, parking light wires, they've got this big thick O-ring here that holds them tight onto there so that the, the wheel's not going to hit it. Then there's a wire clip there and another one up there that grabs the headlight. So I've gone through and painted those and um, as you can see here in the in the rear wheel arches, it went through and got all those guys. Also helps for uh, rust prevention that they are nicely painted. I went and got all these screws for installing the rear fender, all the ones along the front there. So yeah. Uh, better to be painted and uh, gives it a nice finish so this is all looking great in here um, if you remember I went I went back and replaced all those screws on the top of the shock with the correct ones um, that's all that factory undercoating in there you can see the texture Okay, and there you go. Brakes all finished, nicely renewed. We've got good solid pedal. The lights are working. She's running beautifully. So she should be ready for inspection, ready for the road. So that should conclude uh, this episode of my BN1 restoration. She's looking fantastic. I've gone and put the top down now and uh, fit my mirrors on the sides of the windshield there. Nice little thing. Uh, of course, if I want to fold down the windshield or uh, whatever, I have to take off those mirrors, um, but it's really easy. They just come out with those little turn screws. Um, yeah, so really happy. New tires, fresh brakes, all the electrical and everything sorted. She's running beautifully. So should be able to uh, get her ready for registration and safety and get her on the road in the next few weeks. So. Stay tuned, there'll be lots more, and uh, I'm sure lots of little things will come up as she starts getting miles put on her, but uh, it's all part of the joy of owning an Austin Healey, or a British car for that matter. So looking forward to all of it. Um, until next time, I'm Jeff Chrysler, a detail enthusiast. See you again.